And now, the conclusion to the T-Rex. Hey, 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 you! Sit down, sit down, everybody sit down. This isn't a commercial. It's the beginning of the show. Now, last time when we left off, I was just about to, to begin shape the, the actual shaping of the ball. I want to take a mixture of dark brown, a little bit of black, and I shadow the ball from an angle trying to hit the high spots of the chip guard. This will give a contrast between the orange low spots and the brownish black high spots, making the texture of the ball more prominent. I want to now take an opaque white and highlight the top left hand corner, also shooting this color at an angle. So we'll skim off the top of the texture, making it more prominent also. I want to then follow that right up with a transparent yellow to give the ball like a golden highlight around the edges. I find this looks more realistic and attractive than just a plain old white highlight. The whole top left hand corner, this will make the ball look rounded. Now, if you're wondering how I came up with the game over lettering, let me show you how I made it. Now using the computer once again, but in a different program, I designed the lettering, I angle it, skew it the way I want it on the ball, and then a little wild machine called a plotter will take that lettering layout and cut it out of whatever material I put in. Okay, now we're ready to burn. And now it's time to add some airbrush effects such as singe marks and highlights. After all, if you're not going to do this, you might as well just buy vinyl. Now you want to hit the white bright on the edge, just opposite of your shadow part of the letter. And that'll make it pop. This is the part you've all been waiting for, the realistic flames. I start my flames with an opaque white to lay out the overall shape of the flame. The burning flames are a lot more fun than laying out the old traditional flames because they twist and turn and all freehand, where the traditional flames have a lot of masking involved. So much time following what you can find. Put words in your mouth. Now the next step is to add some color to the inferno. I start with a dark orangish red mixture and run around the edges of the white flame. This being transparent will blend into the background and turn the edge of the flame orange that I need to make the flame glow. Now with my airbrush, I'll go back over with the white, adding more dimension and detail to the flame, and outlining some of the edges. I also, using a freehand stencil, will add some of the detail. It looks easy, but trust me, it takes some time and patience to get these babies down. And then at last, I'll take the transparent yellow mixture and I'll give the whole flame a coating of it. This will turn the white highlights yellow and turn the rest of the reddish orange exactly the color that I'm looking for. It's a life. Oh, 
So that I'll As you can see how wild it looks now that all the paint is completed and it's all put back together and now we're just waiting for the owner to show up and give us a taste of what this bad boy can do. For more information on Richard Markham and the Art of the Ride, call 1-800-381-0550 or contact him through his website at www.richardmarkham.com.